Hello. Hello. All right, it is 5.30. It's time for us to get started. Uh, good evening, everybody. It's uh, October 28th. Can you believe that? October 28th already. Um, these last couple uh, weeks in October have just flown by. It's incredible. Um, so tonight we're going to um, be working towards our next paper. And we discussed that a little bit last week. All right. So um, our next paper is going to be a response, all right, to this article. Let me um, pull this up here. So it is a summary and response essay, and we went over the requirements for that um, before. But it's going to be a APA formatted paper. You are going to have to have a thesis statement. You're going to have to have a preview statement. In your introduction, you have to state the thesis. And we've talked about theses as many times. Your preview sentence should be the last sentence of your introduction, and that would introduce the headings of your paper. Then we have a conclusion. And in an APA formatted paper, we do not have a heading for the introduction, but we always have a heading for the conclusion. And in the conclusion, you are required to restate your thesis, you know, kind of flipped around in a different way. And I've told you this before, but I will say it again. When I'm writing papers, I always write my introduction and my conclusion together. I don't write it in a linear fashion. You don't write a paper. I don't write a paper in a linear fashion. And the reason I do this is because the introduction and the conclusion, they should be a mirror image of each other. They should be opposite, but equal. In your introduction, you're basically saying, this is what I'm going to write about. In your conclusion, I flip that over on its head. That's what I wrote about. And then your main body is obviously where you're writing. It's very important to have a thesis statement because that thesis statement kind of sets the whole tone of the paper. You're making a claim in a thesis. You're making a claim and then you're giving a reason why. And then you, your reason why is that overarching, that umbrella, so to speak, of what the paper is about. And then you spend the rest of the paper you know, backing up your claim with evidence. We want to use ethos, logos, and a little bit of pathos, not too much pathos. So if you remember, ethos is... Um, you know, credibility. Hold on for a minute. Trying to let some more people in here. So, ethos is credibility. Logos is an appeal to logic. That would be your facts and your figures. And then, you know, the pathos is the emotion. And Emotion is good, especially in your introduction when you're looking for a, you know, an attention getter, a hook, so to speak, something that really makes the reader want to engage in what you're writing. When you're using logic and you're using facts and you're using figures, well, that's where we get into citations. 
Anytime you have a, a fact, a figure, a date, a number, you have to cite that fact. It, you know, I've said before, it just, it just doesn't come in out of thin air. Uh, you have to have gotten it somewhere. And so though we have to cite that when you're doing, um, you know, the ethos and the appeal to credibility, you're looking for a credible person and you're usually trying to use quotes that this credible person is saying. And therefore, if you're using quotes or statements, you're going to have to cite that. So as you can see from when we first started, we were just kind of laying a foundation. We really didn't talk about the importance of the citations, but as we went through unit two, unit two was focused really on, you know, citations, how to write them. And so now here we are in unit three, we're responding to an article and we're going to have to cite it. And I want to review a little bit about some of the ref, uh, the, uh, not the references, that's not a good word, the resources in the library for finding articles. Um, one or two of you had a difficult time finding articles in response to you know, the article I posted. So um, one of the things that I noticed was the majority if not all the articles that uh, I found were, you know, more in support of that particular point of view, and there was not a lot of opposition to that point of view. Well, you know, this situation that's happening in Loudoun County is like now. I mean, it's totally current event. So there may not be a lot of uh, information on the EBSCO host or uh, some of the other databases that will uh, highlight something that's happening right now. But um, you can certainly use one of the other websites, uh, the, the sites for, um, you know, current events, and, and I'll review that. We, we mentioned a little bit last week. Um, and, and more and more is happening with a story all the time. It's, uh, I don't know if any of you have been following it, but uh, last week, well, it might have been early this week, might have been on the weekend. Um, they're having a big, big election in Virginia. And it is an election for the governor. And the current governor and the current administration in Virginia is Democrat. And they are pretty much neck and neck. So former President um, Obama went down to Virginia and trying to, you know, drum up some support for his uh, Democratic governor candidate whom he's supporting and he's campaigning with, uh, called the whole situation down there um, fake conservative outrage. Uh, and I'm like, okay. So it's interesting. Interesting. Um, certainly, certainly controversial, which, you know, I think will make things interesting. So Let's take a look at some of these databases here real quick. So I'm gonna do a screen share here in a minute. We'll go to the um, library websites. And again, we can access these databases on um, my DTCC under the resources. And over here in the left-hand column, we have the library resources. 
So there are several, actually, you know, there's several resources where we can find information. You know, I told you a little bit about EBSCOhost. We've used that a couple of times. Well, we've got Cirrus here and um, Credo is a reference. You can go right to the New York Times, uh, ProQuest. All of these are databases that you can search for articles. And if you have not necessarily found an article that you know, meets your needs, we'll keep on looking. Don't get frustrated. Don't say, you know, I, I've, I've searched and I've searched and I just can't find what I'm looking for. There are, you know, treasures out there, but they have to be searched for, I guess. You know, and it, it depends in your mind what your, what your response to that article is. So let's take a look one more time at the Cirrus database. And why can't it be rich? Ah, there we go. All right. So I think this happened to me before. All right, so here is a Cirrus research. We've got, um, you know, there's trending topics. You can certainly look through the trending topics, or again, you can do a search. And it's very important that when you search, you do what's called a Boolean search, meaning you put in words and phrases and you use, you, you separate by the word and, and that way it'll look for things that have those phrases. Um, I believe I've got the article right here, I do. So, you know, the article that we're responding to is, you know, framing controversial identity issues in school, uh, bathroom equity, transgender students. These are all things that we can type in the database in the search, okay? So we could um, type in bathroom access and equity. We can type in and transgendered students. And we can use the word and, and again, I'm, I'm using these words and, I'm building this uh, Boolean search and let's see I don't know HB2 I don't know we'll try that HB2 house bill 2 I guess so if I hit the search oh we didn't have any results there so maybe we've got too much going on so well okay i've got two articles here and the other day i found like a whole bunch of articles so here's an article it's from the Wall Street Journal in 2013. Uh, here's one, a timeline. Now this is interesting because in our English 011 class, one of the assignments for this week is in this Cirrus issue researcher to actually find a timeline. And so here we go. We've got a timeline. Maybe you want to pay attention to that one and use it. Maybe you want to find your own timeline. So um, you can print it out. You can save it to the cloud. You can cite it. Let's back up and let's look for other things here. Um, we might be able to, it doesn't like the way I've spelled that. So maybe. I'll just 
Maybe that is a problem. Ah, there you go. Now there's a whole lot more, 113. Why? Because I put an ED after the ER. So lots and lots of articles here, 113 articles. And so it should be pretty easy to look and find some sort of, you know, article here. We could put, um, you know, we could try Loudoun County. Yeah. I probably spelled Loudoun wrong. I'll have to figure out how to spell that one, but, um, Anyway, it doesn't necessarily have to be that issue, but it can be in response to this article. There's other databases. So let's take a look at another database. So I'm going to go get out of this one. I'm going to go into, let's try just the New York Times. We just search the New York Times. Okay. In order to claim our complimentary access, we need to create an account. Well, I'm going to do that a little later then. So I'm not going to do the New York Times. But you have the ability to create an account and have free access, complimentary access. So you can find something in the New York Times. Um, um, let's try um, ProQuest. And again, we can look into um, bathroom access and transgender students. And this has 20 of them. So lots and lots and lots of access here uh, to articles. So if you're having problems finding articles, try a different database. So if we go in EBSCOhost, which is you know one we're more familiar with, maybe that was where we um, ran into issues. So let's try this. And we've got 70 of them here. Now, here's one from the Washington Post. Um, there's all sorts of stuff. Obviously, we want to get the ones that have the full text so that we can read them. Because the ones that don't have the full text, I mean, basically, all they are is a, uh, a, a uh, reference. So school fights. Um, but even like a lot of this stuff is not current as far as like this year. So you can go through here, you can find things and then, you know, we could try, you know, a, uh, a regular you know, maybe try Time Magazine and Bathroom Access and Transgender Students. I don't know. And here we go. U.S. Schools Warned Over Access, Time Magazine. Um, well, that, that's talking about the Obama administration. That was a while ago. This is 2015. Um, there's several, you know, it's an issue. It's been around for a while. So there are lots and lots of resources. So I just wanted to, you know, share that with you for some of you who may be having issues trying to find articles, um, lots of, lots of resources. Um, all right. 
since we're going to be doing a APA formatted paper, I want to once again show everybody where that template is and how to use that template. Prior to our last paper, which was your personal essay from unit one, I showed everybody where the APA formatted paper was and half of you did not use that APA formatted paper. Some people didn't even format their paper. They just typed a paper, okay? The whole point of this class, okay? The whole point of English 101 is to teach you how to write academic papers in APA formatting. That's, you know, that's what we're here for. All of these steps, all these units, APA formatting paper, we're teaching you about thinking things critically and, and then responding to them in a proper way, using a thesis statement, um, citing all of those things. The whole point is to get you prepared for your academic career because doesn't matter what class you're in, you're going to have to write papers and those papers are going to be required to be in APA format. So we need to use APA format. So let's go to the class. I'm going to show you this one more time. All right. If I go to our main page in the announcement sections, I can scroll down and here we go. There is the uh, video I made a couple of weeks ago about writing an APA formatting paper and the requirements there. All right. And we have to show some more announcements. Had a couple announcements since I posted that. There we go. So on October 14th, updated English 101 APA formatted template. So let's take a look. All you have to do is click it right there and it's gonna download your computer. Here it is. Literally, all you have to do, you can put your name right here. And then up here, hit um, File, Save As, and you can, you know, call it the, the name of your paper. We can call it, um, you know, Response Article or whatever. For response. Boom. So then you're going to put in your title. Up here, there's a header. If I double click in the header, I leave the word running header right there. I change the title right here. So I'm going to call the title. response to um, transgender bathroom access article. There you go. So this is my title. While I'm in the heading function, I can go ahead and copy that by uh, highlighting it and hitting control C. When I get to my main header, I need to replace it with that title. So I'm going to just, after I hit control C and copy it, I'll hit control V to paste it. So there it is pasted for me. I go back up to my title page and I'm going to type the title in again 
but this time I'm not going to do it in all caps. So I will come right here and I will give it the title response to transgender bathroom access article. All right. And I'll just go ahead and copy that one more time, highlight it, control C, because the first line on my main body is my title. And it says my title exactly as it appeared on the title page. So I'm going to highlight it, control V, and oh, did I? Uh, oh, I know what it did. It erased all of the spaces there. So let me insert a page break. Boom, 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 boom. Bam. Okay. Now we're good to go. Now oh, it, it, it inserted a huge page break. Okay. We do not skip spaces in APA formatting. Some of your all's papers that I've been grading, there has been spaces skipped. We don't do that. Okay. Um, so right up here in our APA formatted paper, you've got your introduction with no heading. You're going to have to divide your paper up into headings. So I've given you the first heading, the second heading, the third heading. Now these are optional. And since they're optional, we don't need them. We can just delete all this stuff. So let me just go ahead and delete all this stuff. Boom. But I will need a conclusion. And I also need to make sure I do not skip any spaces. So I do have a conclusion. Now, for my reference, I can put the very first article that we are responding to. So that article right here is by Wayne Journal. So let's go ahead and fill out the title page while we're here. All right. So I'm just going to highlight this whole hanging indent. And I'm going to start, start typing J-O-U-R-N-E-L, comma. His first name is Wayne. Oh, there's two L's there. So I'm just going to put a first initial, a period. I'm going to put the date. And it looks like it's 2017. You see it right there? 2017. So in my parentheses, I'm going to put 2017, period. All right. And if you look, I'm following this example right here. Example of my reference entry. I'm following it. Now I have the title of the article. And the title of the article is pretty long. So how am I going to do this? I think I will put my paper underneath here. Slide this over here for a minute. Okay, so my article is Framing Controversial Identity Issues in Schools. Notice only the first letter of the first word is capitalized when I put the title in an APA. Now I have a subtitle. So here I've got this colon. So I'm going to go ahead and capitalize the first letter of my subtitle. The case of HB2, comma, bathroom equity and transgender students, period. All right. So if I look at my example, there you go. Now, the next is my journal source. And my journal source is going to be an italics font. So if I look, first of all, let me put it in italics font. I can either come home and I can hit italics, little button right there. Or I can hit, uh, I think, control I gets me an italics font. But let's take a look here. It is Equity and Excellence in Education. That's my journal. Ec 
equity and excellence in education. All right. Now I need the volume and the addition. So it looks like it's volume 50, addition four. So I'm going to put a 50, and in parentheses, I'm going to put a four. And next, there's a comma there, not a period in this case. Let's see. Yeah, comma. So next, I'm going to put the page number for this. And uh, we got the whole article. So I can just go one through, I don't know how many pages in this goofy thing. I know the majority of the pages are references. This guy did a lot and lot of studying. He did a lot of references. So let's see, does it say how many pages? 354, okay, we're in a journal. So 354, it's gonna start on, Three thirty nine. So let's go back to this. So it's going to be three thirty nine through three fifty four. And I have a period at the end of that. Okay. Now I downloaded this article and I don't remember where we retrieved it from. So I'm not gonna worry about that because I've got a copy of the article here, okay? Um, if we didn't have a copy of the article, then we need the retrieved from. Um, probably could find it on EBSCOhost, but anyway. Now, whatever article you have that you find, and it could be more than one, you're gonna go ahead and put that using the second hanging indent. But here's the deal. These articles, and I'm just gonna move this out of the way. If I have more than one article here, which I should have at least two, they're gonna be in alphabetical order. So depending upon the name of the author of the second article, it's either gonna go before, um, w journal or after w journal all right so then as we're beginning to get this framed you know as we read the article and we try and figure out our plan of attack how we're going to respond to that article well that's where you come up with a thesis statement okay so I have it highlighted here. You can have your normal introduction where you introduce what's going on. You introduce the first article, you know, or introduce the issue. And then you write a thesis statement. And as soon as you get done writing your thesis statement, you might as well jump on down to your conclusion and put your thesis statement there. You can work at work it later, but have your thesis statement there because you got to restate it. All right. Then you need to start working on your preview sentence and your, you know, you could start writing it, but it doesn't mean maybe you don't know what all your headings are going to be, but start writing it. So, you know, at least that last sentence is, is going to be your, your preview uh, sentence. All right. So this is the. APA formatted paper. And, you know, it's there as a reference for you. It's there as a tool. Please use it. All right. If you don't use it, then you have to type all that stuff out from scratch. And, you know, I mean, if you want to go through that extra heartache about doing that, then go ahead and, you know, write it out from scratch, but that doesn't make any sense to me. Why not use uh, something that all the formatting and everything is done? All you have to do is replace 
you know, the words with your own. So APA formatting, we've practiced thesis statements and we've practiced them again. Um, I'm not sure if we should practice them some more. Um, is anybody unsure about thesis statements and, you know, would like a little more practice? Because we could certainly do that. All right. Let's talk about our assignment for this week. Okay. Our assignment for this week is going to be a wonderful tool. I don't know why they didn't give us this tool in the first unit, but guess what it is? It is a thesis outline planner. How about that? So it's going to help you with your thesis. It even tells you it goes in the introduction paragraph. Now it says here it's the last sentence of the introduction paragraph, but we're throwing that we're throwing that preview sentence in there. So it's helping you organize the paper that is going to be due next week. So this, which I downloaded, I'm going to show you how to download this yourself. I like having something in my hand. I recommend you print it out and have something in your hand because it's a whole lot easier. At least for me, it's a whole lot easier to have something in my hand, just like, you know, when it's time for the grading rubric, we always want to have the grading rubric printed out. And I did print it out. I got a whole stack of stuff here. So uh, where did I print it out here? Ah, there you go. Print out the grading rubric. So you can have it right by your side and you can use it as a checklist as you're writing your thesis and outlining planning sheet. Okay. Everything has a grading rubric. This is what I use when I grade your papers. So it only makes sense that you have it right as you're writing your paper. That sounds familiar. I think I've said that before. Anyway, um, let's go ahead and look at the assignment. I'm going to do my share screen again. I don't know how many times I'm going to need that. Let's see. If I go to my content on the English 101 page, and we'll scroll down here to unit three, which I'm already in unit three. You can scroll through all of this stuff, but it's just so much easier if you, you know, hit the schedule. Because it'll tell you right here. We need to go through this stuff. We need to do this stuff. And we need to submit this assignment. So let's go ahead and take a look at the assignment. The assignment that is due this week is the thesis and outline planner assignment. So we're going to put what you've been learning in class into action by filling out this planning document, summary response, thesis, and outlining planner. That's a link. You can click on it and you'll be able to print out the thesis and outlining planner. It is a document. You can fill in the lines of the document and then resubmit it. Um, it includes your thesis statement and other main components of the essay. Please go ahead and check the summary and essay assignment so that you know, you know, this is the goal. This is the destination. We are on the journey. So if you don't know where you're going, you're, you know, you don't know if you're going in the right direction, then you might be lost. So it may not be a bad idea to check that out. All right. And that's just the submission for it. We'll have to go back and uh, find the assignment.
All right. So what are we going to be doing? We're going to be completing this planning document, and it'll help you gain feedback to ensure that you're on the right track as you begin to write your summary response essay. So there's a couple of um, web pages with learning material, thesis statements. Again, we're going to keep it simple. So use the information found in our class announcements for thesis statements. Um, download the response and thesis outline planner and use it to plan out the sections of your summary response essay. Be as thorough as possible and watch for feedback from me to help guide you in your final essay. So in this one, we're not going to do a first draft and then a second draft. You know, you'll get feedback on your thesis statement and outline so that you can, you know, write your essay. What to include in your submission? Well, just the planner. We are not face-to-face -face sections, so don't worry about that. You're going to upload and complete your worksheet in this assignment. But where is, ah, there it is. Let's review the rubric. It's always good to review the rubric. So this assignment is worth 50 points. There are five sections worth 10 points apiece. The first section says, are all three parts of the introduction, have they been thoroughly completed? Do you have a hook, background, and a tentative thesis statement? Part B. The student has an excellent job on the summary by doing all of the three of the following. Includes a main ideas, a major details from the article, and uses your own words, but does not express an opinion. In a summary, in a summary, we do not inject our opinion. We do not inject our point of view. All we do is summarize the main points of the article. Part C, student does an excellent job establishing a framework for the body of the paper. Within three to four main points, provides examples, details, and the citations to support it. Part D, the student thoroughly and logically revises a high quality thesis. And then the last 10 points are going to be standard written English with virtually no errors. All right. So we have that handy. Let's go ahead and take a look at the outline. Let's see. Did I download that thing? I didn't know. I don't think I did. So let's back up the train here. It is always hard to go to the top of the page when I'm in the screen share because Zoom has all of the buttons up there. All right. Let's take a look at what this looks like. All right, so this is the document that you're gonna download and fill out. So your introduction should have an attention grabber or a hook, the background context. That's what your article is about, okay? Now, this is background on, you know, the situation, which is, you know, bathroom access, transgendered students, that kind of thing. Your summary right here is summary of the article that I assigned. This article right here, that's what your summary is. Now, 
here's the deal. This article, you know, you're looking at about 10 pages or so. Your summary, there's no way you could get away with a summary that is three sentences long. It just doesn't make sense. Now, I'm not telling you to write a 10-page summary, but a, an article that long, you're probably going to need a nice, beefy paragraph trying to summarize that article, all right? I'm not telling you to write two pages, you know, maybe a paragraph, maybe uh, two paragraphs, but your summary needs to be substantial because it's a substantial article. Your main body. This is now, and, and again, let me back this up. Your summary has no opinion, no interjection, whether you agree or disagree, nothing. You're just summarizing the article. Your main body is where, okay, you're making your point you're making your point based upon your thesis statement and then you need to give examples and explanations okay and it even asks you hey are you responding to these details positively or negatively and then make sure you put down your apa citation which is the article that you looked up in support of your response so you have a first main point you have a second main point and you have a third main point. Do you need a fourth main point? All right. Then your conclusion. In your conclusion, you reword the thesis. Now, it's not asking you to write your conclusion. It's not asking you to write your introduction. It's only asking you to formulate a thesis and then reword your thesis, flip it on its head, so to speak. Okay, so you, you are not like writing your paper. This is just a tool to help you write your paper. And again, according to, you know, this whole KISS method of writing a thesis, we're making a statement, we're putting forth an idea, we're using the word because, and we're giving a reason why. And that becomes the overarching theme of your response. All right, so does anybody have any questions or comments about APA formatted paper and how to find a template. We'll take one thing at a time. Can everybody find a template? I would say yes. You can find it. All right. Yes. So what I would suggest, hey, do like I did. Let's let's all Take a minute while we're all here together and let's find the template. Let's download the template. Let's put your name on the template and then hit save as. You know, you always go back and change the title. Maybe you know what you want to title it, but at least uh, get that template downloaded and your name on it and, you know, hit save as to save it as, you know, something, get the ball rolling so that when we're not here together, you get lost and you're like, uh, okay, I don't know where that template is. Okay. So I'm going to give you all a minute. Let's everybody download that template. Mr. Hill, I have a question. Yes. So for, as far as the article that we have to find on our own, Mm -hmm. um, we have to find an article to support our stance on the, or was it to support the article stance? Um, 
No, it is, you're not, you're not supporting the article. You're not uh, going against the article. What you're trying to do is you're trying to respond to the article. Now, it's helpful if you find an article to support your point of view. One of the things that I have found is that many of the articles only support one point of view, does not support the opposite point of view. So it may be challenging to find an article. And so that's where you're going to have to go to various sources. If you've exhausted all the resources and you can't find an article to support your point of view, well then, you know, like I said, you can try and going to Google and finding an article, but we need to make sure, remember last unit, we talked about the crap test. And actually you're supposed to take your article and run it through the crap test. So uh, if you find an article via um, Google, you know, you're gonna have to run it through the crap test. Is it an article? Is it uh, factual or is it opinionated, you know? And you really have to look at, you know, the author's point of view, the author's bias, and everybody has, everybody has a bias. So even reporters who are reporting for, you know, mainstream media, you know, everybody has a point of view. Um, so this is, this is a, uh, this is a controversial subject. So, um, but yes. You need to find an article for you to respond to that article. All right. Does that help? I think you froze, Brenda. Can you hear me? All right, does everybody have that template downloaded? Give me a thumbs up. Looking for that, you know, Zoom interaction here. So give me a thumbs up if I see one thumbs up, two, three, four. We're getting there. All right, let's get some more thumbs ups here. All right. Hey, I like that. All right, so while you're downloading things, hey, let's take a moment to download the thesis outline planner, all right? So I'm not saying you need to print it out, but go ahead and at least download it, all right? If it's like my computer, it's going to send it to, you know, the download section or whatever, and then I have to move it or save it into some sort of folder where I keep everything organized. So while we're here, okay, we've downloaded the template for the APA paper. Let's go ahead and download, like I said, the thesis outline planner, and let's go ahead and download our grading rubric. So there should be three documents and you can go ahead and, you know, if you're organized, which I'm organized, so I have a folder that says English 101 and I have a folder that says unit three and I put those documents in that folder so I know exactly where they are. Everything I need uh, for this unit is in my unit three folder. So let's go ahead and take a moment and download those other two documents the thesis outline planner and the grading rubric.
let's just have a look at what he was saying. All right. And if you have that article, download your you know, computer, you can move that over into your unit three folder. And then the article you looked for, you can also move that into your unit three folder, keep everything nice and neat, nice and organized. All right, so the only assignment that is due this week for English 101 is that thesis and outline planner, which it seems like a pretty, uh, pretty easy assignment to get done. Probably the most difficult part will be, you know, writing the summary, the summary of the main article. So in our uh, reading, there is a, there's a, an article called Summary Writing Tips, which is actually a article that was in unit two, which you should have looked at, so you should be familiar with. But you know, it doesn't hurt to take a look at that one more time. So when we're writing a summary, we're writing a good summary. Um, and what was interesting in there, and I'll show you this uh, when we get there, but they have a wonderful tool that you can download in that summary writing tips. And it is the Writing Center Stanton Campus Signal Phrase Verbs. Okay, so... This is important because when you're writing, you want to avoid passive writing. And passive writing is where you put the subject after the verb. So for instance, anytime you begin a sentence with there, there once was a man, okay? Or here is the idea. Anytime you use the word, there or here, and you begin a sentence with that, it's actually passive because there and here, as I've said before, are adverbs, and we don't begin sentences with adverbs because, again, there is no subject of a sentence that's there. There is no subject of a sentence that is here. Those are adverbs. They modify the verb. They tell you where, okay? So the proper thing to say was a man was there or an idea is here. But if you use nice, strong action words, you can really avoid passive writing. Passive writing, uh, passive verbs are what's called the to be verb form. Um, and it you begin with a to be verb form, which would be like to or was or were or is being or was being or shall be or uh, may, you know, the to be verb form. And then you end it with a past tense verb like um, shall be stopped. Let me give you an example. This madness shall be stopped. Okay. Let's look at that sentence. This madness shall be stopped. When we're looking for the subject of a sentence, a subject is most often a person, place, or thing. And the subject of a sentence is the person, place, or thing who is doing the action. So we have to ask our squelch. We have to ask ourselves, who 
is stopping the madness. Because, you know, this madness shall be stopped. That is passive writing. It's not active writing. We ask ourselves, who is going to stop the madness? And that answer is the subject of your sentence. And in that sentence, we don't even know who the subject is. All that we know is the madness is going to be stopped. But that's passive. It, there's no action there. There's, it's, it's, uh, it's weak. Now, am I saying you can never, ever use a passive sentence? No, I'm not saying that at all. Quite honestly, we, we talk like that all the time. But when you use too many passive sentences, your writing lacks action, and you, you honestly bore the reader. It becomes a psychological bore. It becomes a drudgery to read your writing. So you want strong action verbs. And like I said, the Writing Center has a list of strong action verbs that you can use in your summary. It's great. Let's go ahead and take a look at that because just, just a wonderful resource. Um, let me hit the share screen. And I've got like a million tabs open up here. Oh. Let's try these tabs. We separated them, okay. Right here, summary writing tips. Now, it'll tell you what a strategy is, which is a brief retelling of the main ideas and major details of the article, and the summary is in your own words. Should be about a paragraph, you know. I'm, I'm here to tell you, you should not be summarizing that article in three sentences. Just uh, not, not gonna work. Okay, the steps for writing a summary. The steps for writing a summary. We're gonna to wanna to read and annotate the text first, okay? Now, we've been practicing how to annotate text. I actually printed out the article. You can just, you can either print it out or you can you know, have it on your computer. But, you know, if you open it up in a, PDF file, uh, depending on if you have Acrobat or not, you might be able to annotate, but if not, um, you know, you might need to come up with a way to annotate. Anyway, you get your main ideas, and in your own words, you create a topic sentence for your summary that includes the source information and the main ideas of the text, and you're going to summarize the major points. First sentence is very important because in your summary, your first sentence must list the title of the publication, the title of the article, the author's last name, and the year of the publication. All right, so let's see. That's going to be real easy because we got the article. Oh, wait a minute. I moved the article into my unit three. 101, unit three, there it is. All right. So in the first sentence of my summary, I need to mention the name of the article, the date, the source, equity and excellence, and the author. So here's an example. 
in a 2020 Composure article, How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days, A. Anderson details different examples of common mistakes women make in dating and explain ways that women can surmount these pitfalls. Your first sentence tips. Make sure your first sentence paraphrases the thesis or implies the thesis of the article. Hey, where would you find the thesis of the article? Probably in the first paragraph. All right. Tips for writing the summary. Do not state your opinion. Write your summary in the same order as the original details. Use attribution and transitions throughout your summary and end your summary by explaining how the article ended. And they've provided a three minute video on how to write a summary. Check it out. Your author attribution. There is a video about that. Check that out. Annotations and headers. To write the body of your summary, use annotations. Go to the section uh, and paragraph by paragraph and transition words between your main ideas. Um, and you only, need to, you only need to use a couple of examples in your summary. And then you have a concluding sentence that, you know, the concluding sentence of the summary does not reflect the main idea. Instead, the concluding sentence of your summary should start with a transition word, the author's last name, a strong verb. Here we go, that strong verb again, and paraphrase the author's final, final point. And this is this tool I was telling you about, the strong verb list. And there it is from the Writing Center, and you can download your own personal copy. I strongly suggest you do that, all right? And this is a tool worth keeping for use in future papers. Good stuff, good stuff. Always like verbs. Um, so, you know, a couple years ago, I. Uh, I took Spanish one and Spanish two, and uh, I got a Spanish dictionary, and there was another book that was thicker, thicker than the Spanish dictionary, and the whole book was full of verbs. Like, good golly. Um, but if you think about our language, we have verbs for everything because when we when we talk we talk about the action we talk about the things we do you know so i'm talking to you talking is a verb i'm appearing online appearing is a verb you see how it works lots of verbs you know and then of course you got one verb, but you've got like several verb tenses. You have, uh, you know, past tense, present tense, future tense. You know, it can get uh, it can get mind boggling after a while. So anyway, uh, I suggest you take a look at how to summarize. Uh, again, you take a look at that resource um, on your own. And there are some other resources in that reading list, which uh, we have already mentioned, but um, you guys go through that on your own. I mean, really, there's not much more that we need to cover tonight. Um, I am certainly available here to answer any questions that you have, but... Um, you have all of the tools that you need to complete this assignment. And again, we want to look to our destination. That's what we'll go ahead and do. Let's once again, look at 
our destination, which is the assignment that's going to be due next week. So give me a second. I will share our video and we will take a look at that because that's the big picture here. Let's see here. So if I go unit three summary and response essay, let's take a look at that. And why Let's go through this way? That link is probably not working out here. Um, assignments. Here we go. All right, so next week, this is our destination. After you read the instructor signed article, which we have, you will do additional research to locate one additional source on the same topic. You should locate this additional article before formulating your personal response to sections of the original article. This additional article may express a similar point of view, an opposing point of view, or a more nuanced point of view, neither the same nor the opposite, but somewhere in the middle. You will first write a summary of the original article and then respond to several points with which you agree or disagree. You will use your research to support and enrich your response paragraphs. You will accomplish the following objectives. In your paper here, you're going to analyze college level and professional text using critical thinking strategies. What are those critical thinking strategies? You know, we've talked about that in the first uh, unit. You're going to develop information literary skills by evaluating research and documenting information from your sources, right? So your articles, you're gonna to wanna to annotate them so that you can find the information. And once you find the information and you pull it over, you wanna make sure you have the citations. You're gonna compose an organized, coherent, and well-developed essay integrating a summary and a response. And again, the summary is void of your opinion. The response is where you share your opinion. Process and resources. You're going to read and annotate the original article and begin to develop an opinion. You're going to locate an additional article on your own that supports, contradicts, or enhances the topic and point of the instructor provided article. Using the crap test, you're going to evaluate the suitability of the additional article and you're going to submit the source evaluation worksheet, which we did last week. Now, if the article that you found is still, you know, a little weak and trying to support your point of view, you can certainly search for another article. It says you must have at least one article, but you can have, you can certainly have more articles. You just have to have at least one. You are going to complete the summary response thesis and outlining planner, which is due this week. And you're going to review the unit three summary and response essay rubric. So let me click on that. And um, got a million things up here. We'll come back to that. Um, boom. I have too many of these things open. That's a problem. Where? All right. Let me. Probably 
closed it all on myself. So too many, too many tabs open and I'm, I got lost. So let's go back here. I apologize for that. Um, I don't need this writing tips open. Let's go back here. All right, we will look at the um, rubric in just a minute. Okay, the structure and content. You're gonna have a title page, it's APA formatted. So we downloaded, everybody downloaded the template. So we'll all be on the same page. So you just fill out the title page on the template. Your introduction is one paragraph. Your first paragraph is a brief introduction that addresses the topic and the purpose of the essay. You need to hook the reader with an attention grabber. Give some brief background on the context and it says the last sentence, but we'll just say the second to the last sentence of the paragraph is going to be your thesis. Your last sentence is going to be preview sentence. All right. Your summary. You're going to write a summary that talks about your article. Say uses five to eight sentences. You better use eight sentences because that's a long article. OK, uh, if you go over eight sentences, that's good. All right. Like I said, if you give me three sentences as a summary to that article, you know, I'm going to raise the old BS flag. There ain't no way. Um, now, your main body paragraphs of your response. Okay. Your paragraphs respond to points positively. That means you agree, support, and provide examples and experience that underscore the author's text. Your sources must be included using quotes and paraphrases to support and enrich the information. Or your paragraph responds to points negatively. You critique, you disagree, and you point out problems or weaknesses in the text. And again, your source must be included using quotes and paraphrases to support and enrich the information. Finally, you have a conclusion which is a brief mini paragraph to bring closure to your essay. You must restate the main points of the thesis and leave the reader with something to think about and consider on the way out. Then finally, you have your reference page, which is in APA format using the hanging indents. And that's where we're going. Let's take a look at the rubric real quick. 200 points. This is a big assignment. Okay. It's worth lots of points. All right. Number one, you're going to get graded on your APA formatting. What is APA formatting? Do you have the right font, which is 12 point times New Roman? Is it double spaced? Do you have a title page? Is a page number in the header? Do you have your citations and do you have a reference page? And if you're missing any of those, points drop off. Listen, in the first unit on your personal essays, there were several of you who failed to write in an APA formatted paper. And I kicked it back to you and I asked you to change it. And, you know, some of you didn't. And I had to grade accordingly. Look, this is easy 10 points that you don't want to give up. So if you use that template, you should be good to go. You really should. If you don't use a template and you, you try and write this paper from scratch without the template, you're going to lose points. Okay. Your essay development. Do you have all the required paragraphs? Are they well-developed? Do they include effective topic sentences and transitions? And does the essay meet the page requirements? What are the page requirements? Three to four pages, right? Your summary. Your summary is worth 35 points. Your summary is worth 35 points. If, and, and we wrote summaries last week and People did not 
put the author, the title, the date. And here it is. If you had printed out the rubric and if you had read the rubric before you submitted your paper, then nobody should have missed this. But if you fail to name the author, the title, and the copyright date, you're going to lose 10 points. Look at this. Look at zero points. The summary is incomplete and the instructor is unable to evaluate. Because look what I got to evaluate it for. An author, a title, and a date. If they're not there, you know, you're giving away points. Is your summary objective? Is it clear and concise? The student does not, uh, does an excellent job of being objective, meaning you're not inputting your opinion. Are you concise? You do not express an opinion about the text and you do not include uh, minor details, just the major points. Is your summary consistent of accurate and well-written paraphrases? You do not use quotes in the summary, which a couple of you, when we grade the summaries uh, before, you used direct quotes in the summary. You're not supposed to use direct quotes in the summary. Now you are supposed to paraphrase, but you're not supposed to use direct quotes. You can use the direct quotes in the main body in your response, but not in the summary. All right, standard written English, what I like to call gum, grammar, usage, and mechanics. All right, 25 points for that. Spelling, punctuation, and grammar. Now, the requirements of the critical response. The introduction does an excellent job of three of the following. So you get 20 points for your introduction. Wait, there's more. You get 15 points for your introduction. That's 35 points. Wait, is there more? No, that's just for your reaction. So your introduction is worth 35 points with the introduction and the thesis statement, okay? So do you include background, context, and end with an appropriate thesis statement? Several of you were not putting in your thesis statement, so you were giving away lots and lots of points. If you do not have a thesis statement, look, thesis statement is mentioned right here, all the way up to this. Do you have a thesis statement? 17 points. Do you have a thesis statement? Seven, 15 points. Oh, there's no thesis statement, zero points, which means you get zero points here and zero points there. 35 points, boom, gone, if you don't have a thesis statement. All right, thesis statement does an excellent job at all three of the following. It is focused and developed. It effectively fulfills the purpose of the response and it provides a blueprint for the paper. Now your reactions, 35 points. Student includes many thoughtful and thought provoking reactions to the text and includes appropriate personal opinions and or experiences. Textual support. The student supports your the response with meaningful and specific examples from the text. That would be, you know, the article that you looked up, but you can even use you can even use text from the article we're reviewing to support or defend your point of view. Your outside source is it appropriate? Did you use it appropriately? Is it thorough and does it enhance your response and your conclusion? Your conclusion is worth twenty points. It thoroughly thoroughly summarizes the response and it provides an excellent sense of closure. Okay, so. Lots and lots of points there. That's where we're going. That's tomorrow. Now, this assignment this week is, it should not take you very long. Like I said, probably the most challenging part would be writing the summary. What I would suggest to you is do this and don't stop. And I know, I know, you know, I appreciate that some of y'all are taking more than one class and you know, you're dealing with 
family and children and a job and, you know, all these other things that we all are, are dealing with. But I would encourage you to work ahead on that paper while it's still fresh. Uh, and that'll give you more time. And don't, you certainly don't want to wait to the last minute. This is not the kind of assignment where you want to wait until um, Monday or Tuesday of next week to begin. Uh, you want to work a little bit. And that, this is what I suggest, you know, work a little bit and walk away and work a little bit more and walk away and, and work a little bit more and walk away. And then things will come to you. I mean, I like woke up at four o'clock this morning and this thought was in my head that I needed to do something. And I'm like, okay. And then I go back to sleep. But the crazy thing is, is I did need to do it. And I had totally forgotten about it. But, you know, your subconscious works while you're asleep. And, uh, you know, it reminds you of things. And so first thing this morning, I went and did what I needed to do, which was, uh, which was really good. What did I need to do? Well, uh, I have this machine called a CNC, and it's a basically a robot. And um, I program that robot to cut out uh, pieces and parts out of uh, stock material, in this case, wood. And uh, I had originally programmed it to cut out um, pieces that were supposed to be a half an inch thick. But um, my students ran it through the sander a little bit longer, and they're a little bit less than a half an inch thick. And if I did not go back and readjust the thickness, then that blade would have cut through all the way to my table and marred up my, my vacuum table that holds the wood down. So totally didn't even think about that until about four o'clock this morning when it popped in my head, hey, you need to readjust the height on that cutting, cutting tip. So just, you know, things happen and your subconscious will let you know about things. And so that's why I say it's a good idea to work on it a little bit and walk away and, you know, you're doing other things, all of a sudden, uh, an idea pops in your head like, hey, yeah, all right, that's a good thing. But again, if you wait to the last minute, those wonderful opportunities may not even come. You'll be all stressed. Oh, man, I got to get this done. So anyway, any questions? I think we are good. I think we are good for uh, tonight. We have covered all we need to cover. Any questions? All right. So if you are joining me for English 011, we're going to take 15 minutes. So at 715, we will start uh, in a new Zoom classroom for English 011. Uh, if you're not joining me for English 011, uh, have a great rest of the evening. Have a great weekend. It's supposed to be wet tomorrow and Saturday. Um, get your stuff taken care of and uh, get your stuff turned in. If you still owe me things, you can still turn it in. Okay. Don't think because I had to submit midterm grades that, you know, it's done and over turn it in. I would rather you put your, you know, you, you turn your stuff in and we get you a good grade here by the end of this uh, course. All right. So uh, with that, we'll see y'all later. Okay. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Mr. Hill, this assignment is Wednesday by nine, correct? Or by 12, right? Is what? Uh, do on Wednesday, Wednesday by 12. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I like Wednesday. Thank Wednesday's you. a great day. Okay. No question. I, I know I um, came in. Uh, go ahead. Say that again. You're, you're kind of breaking up. Um, I was late for uh -huh. the this, well, this evening. Um, I was short staff at work. So is this recording going to be posted on announcements? I can go back from the beginning. Yeah, I, I'll try and do that. I was supposed to post the one from last week and I got distracted. So I will, I will definitely try and get these reposted. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Um, I just wanted to go back to see what I missed. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So okay. Um, I, I will try and get that posted. Great. Thank you. All right.